Now, uh, you'll like this, not a lot, but you'll like it. It's time to join Philip Hodson in London with his magical guest for today, Personally Speaking. My guest this week is a man who's well known for having a few tricks up his sleeve. Today, I'm hoping to persuade him to put his cards on the table. Paul Daniels. You're at the height of your powers, and the nearest thing we've got to a wizard like Merlin these days. Mm, well, he was Welsh. My ancestors were Welsh, so maybe I'm uh, either a direct descendant or maybe I'm him. <laughs> Have you always been as confident as you are today? Oh, no. <laughs> no, when I was uh, a, a boy, a teenager, and then a, a, a young adult, I was really shy, very, very shy person. And um, the magic brought me out a bit when I learned mm. a magic trick and then a few more and a few more. I was quite uh, confident within the magic, but off stage I wouldn't go to parties or dances and... Shy and Discos time. hadn't been invented. Girlfriends? And, you know. uh, one or two, yeah, but um, card tricks were more fun, really. Were you ever picked on at school or...? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not very tall. And um, it's a funny thing when, the, when you're young, I think that height has got a lot to do with whether you're picked on or not. Mm. Uh, it's as simple as that, except we had the opposite applies. The super tall, gawky guys, they got mm. laughed at as well. Um, it seems to be the, the mid to tall height that becomes the bully. Mm. Do you still feel a bit sensitive about no. size, appearance? No, no, no. Well, no. You, you know... You, no, when, I, when, I was, uh, when I was 32, I did a show... Uh, or I didn't do a show, I, was, I drove somebody else to do a show. Mm. And I'm standing there, it was a hen party out in Essex, and all these women, they're far naughtier than us, you know. Oh, rude. And this comic came on, and he was blue as blue, and then there was this male stripper came on, and he finished up, he was just as a Viking when he started, with just these horns on his head, dancing around the stage. And I, <laughs> I looked at him, and I thought, <laughs> for the rest of my life, no matter what I can do in my life, no matter how tall, fat, thin I could become. I can never look as stupid as you do right now. And on all my worries and inhibitions and hang-ups all came on, you know. So you just experimented with a, with a wig for a while, did you, was that? No, the wig was quite a business plan. Um, the wig came on because I was going... started to go bald when I was 32. Yeah. And at that time, a lot of people like Bonnie Langford, uh, Lisa, Lena Zabaroni, people like that were coming in, and suddenly show business went very young. I thought you were going to say they were going bald as well, but go on. Nah. <laughs> and, and, and I never realised that show business does that. It yeah. comes and goes in waves, you know. Um, you get a little quality, and then you get a lot of young people in for a while until they've learned how to do it, and then they're gone. And I didn't know, so I bought a wig and put it on. Uh, went on Red Cup Beach to test it against the wind, and it didn't blow off. Uh, <laughs> but I never made a secret of it. I always made jokes about it. Yeah. And I think it was the Sun newspaper that uh, every year used to do the discovery of the wig, yeah. um, which means they'd never been to a show. You said that you were unconfident until you turned to the magic. Now, is it that the magic gives you a sense of real power? Because however many yeah. cards you put on the table, you have still got more up your sleeve. Uh, oh, yeah. Last century they used to use sleeves. Sleeves are too narrow now and too full of big shirts and baggy shirts. But the, um, the thing is that I suppose it gave me... It was a subject I knew something about. And if anybody is shy, it, it, I recommend they join a, a stamp club or a train spotters club or, or something that they can learn about and converse about as equals. And then you realise that you're not inferior. You, there's nothing to be inferior about for anybody. But magic impresses us, even frightens us. I mean, do you like the sense of having one over somebody else? No, I just think it's fun. I, d I don't think I'm, I'm doing, putting one over. Uh, it's a form of entertainment that makes you think, hey, maybe somebody can defy natural laws, okay. you know. Let's switch. Um, how, it's a little bit about your boyhood, but how close were you to your family, to your parents? Oh, extremely close. Um, having said that, my dad was always out at the cinema every evening, yeah. so I'd come home from school, he'd be going to work sort of attitude. Yeah. But we seemed to grow up uh, certainly with a great love uh, from mum and dad to me were they my brother were they confident people or overprotective of the young uh, Paul? no pretty very confident my mother's a very very confident person my father was a great craftsman mm. and totally nice guy I don't know anybody who didn't like him um, so 
they were a okay. My brother's confident. He, he's, oh. uh, I think, a touch smaller than I am, but he's a brilliant keyboard player. And many organists up and down the country certainly know the name of Trevor Daniels. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're 20 years older than your wife. Yes. Does that make you feel more or less secure? Uh, doesn't worry me. Um, in the beginning, when we first met, Debbie was, I suppose, about 20. I'd be about 40, somewhere around there. And forgive me going around and about all the time, because I've, I've never really thought about age. I'm still waiting to grow up, I suppose. But I got... Uh, I liked a girl, and I started to go out with her a while, and then I thought, wow, I the press are going to have a field day here. So I backed away for a while, and then we got together again, backed away for a while, mm. until I knew that she was as positive about it as I was, and then that was okay. So we have a great time together. Do you believe in God? No, I used to believe in God. I, I'm a great believer in um, Mother Nature as, and the natural cycle of life. But I don't believe there's an afterlife, and I don't believe in any psychic sort of world or in any way, occult world, at any way. But you used to believe in God? I was brought up to believe in God. My grandmother uh, was uh, ran the local mission. She used to clean it, dust it and everything, and, and we were sent to Sunday school every day. And it's very hard to break with what you are trained to believe as a child. Mm. Very difficult. But I, I just think it's illogical now. Once upon a time, you were a junior clerk in the rates department. Yes. In then my, you went on in to... In my youth, yes. In your youth. Then in you went, youth. On, went on to run... A mobile grocery. Uh, that was insurance, in case show business didn't kick off. Now, you're top of the national bill. Mm -hmm. Are you still hungry for more? Yeah, I'm, um, that's why I'm still writing books this year and writing, finishing off this year a couple of film scripts I've done. One in which I, I hope I'll be in it, and one I know I can't be. Mm. But uh, still pushing, and always trying to change the programmes I make for BBC so that when you switch on, you never know what you're going to get. It's never, it never shouldn't be like last week's show. It should, it should always be a surprise somewhere. They say in some ways that you're a bit of a Victorian. What's a woman's place? Where's a woman's place, in your view? Well, I don't think I am a Victorian. Um, Debbie, yes. I, I married a girl who loves to cook and loves to garden. I'm garden management, she's garden labour. Now, that seems very reasonable to a lad from the North. But it, it's just that that's what she loves to do. If she hadn't loved to do it, that would have been all right, because uh, I lived for 20 years on my own. And you can do some magic with a washing machine. And I never did any washing, and I never did any cooking. I just went and out mm. and used other services yeah. to do it. Some critics find you almost overconfident, even outspoken, mm. you know, dubbed the magician with the mouth. Yeah. Yeah, it's very weird. I think that you'll find most of that comes from the South, where they speak in a different uh, rhythm of language to the North. And, and that's OK. We, we in, in the North have a hard way of speaking. It's a hard sound. It comes from the Indo-Aryan, as opposed to the, the Romance languages yeah. of the South. Yeah. And so I think the people in the South do find it a hard sound to take on board. But they misinterpret, you say? Yeah. Yeah, they do. So, <laughs> I mean, you fella. don't think you've got an answer to everything? No, I don't. Uh, I've got lots of questions I'd like to ask, and uh, as we sit here, we're in, in the south and we're in Westminster, that's where I'd like to ask questions, but there's, and get, force them to give good answers. But that is, I think, northern. I think it's very Yorkshire to, to go for the throat and, and to f want it just the facts and not the waffle. Mm. Um, but is it based on a kind of suspicion that people are or are apt to deceive you, pull the wool over your eyes? No, it's just that sometimes you can see them doing it, mm. and I don't like that. Uh, I think we give in too easy in mm. this country. I, I, I've travelled the world now, yeah. and if you get bad service in another country, they speak out and they won't have it. Classic example, I sell boxes of magic uh, through a licence. Mm. And a chap came to me, and he had a beautiful wooden box of magic, gloss finish, it was gorgeous. And I said to him, you know, wow, why don't we have this in England? Oh, we do not have to produce this for England. The English, they will buy anything, you know. So I don't think we should. As a last question, was your childhood the happiest time of your life? Is that why you haven't grown up? No, no, I think my life has just got better and better every year. Every year, it's just got better. I'm as happy now as I'm ever likely to be, I think. Until next year. Paul Daniels, thank you. Magical? 
And next week, Philip's guest will give Canadian Ernie Wise. Now, in a few minutes, we'll be joined by disc jockey James Whale, who'll be debunking the new man myth, and you can see Tim Grundy as you've never seen him before. But that's all after the national and international news, read by Moira Stewart. <laughs>